and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Some of y'all hiding behind the music. Come on. He come on Shandabai. Hallelujah. And we bless you. And we lift you. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Messiah. The Bible says we ought to pray in the Holy Ghost. Building up our most holy faith. I dare you to lift. We said we won't be silent. I wish I had some. He come no bo shabaya. Some prayer warriors, some intercessors, some people that said, I cannot remain silent. I break the concrete off of your mouth. Hey, Katando! He come da 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 bo shaya. Father, forgive us for anything that we've said, done, thought wrong, contrary to your will. I ask God that you would cleanse us, make us whole. We repent, we stop and turn, head in a different direction. We beg and pardon. We beg your pardon this morning. We ask for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. You cleanse our hearts, cleanse our hearts, make us white as snow. Jesus, purge us, purge us to this intimacy, purge us with his, make us whiter than snow than a Messiah. In the name of Jesus, anything that have hindered us, stopped us, blocked us, God, you know, we put it on the altar this morning. Come on, come on, every work of the flesh. Ah, yeah, the Messiah. Things that are internal in our hearts that are lodged there, dislodge them in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you, and we command you to loose your hold. Take your filthy fingerprints off of the people of God. Hell, we come again in the Messiah. In the we come against guilt. We come against self guilt, and we decree and declare that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Jesus Christ. So I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I enter my side. We plead the blood. Buckets and buckets of the blood. That couple shot up. Buckets and buckets of the blood of Oshaya. The blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed for us over 2,000 years ago. The blood that shall never lose its strength. The red blood. Not blue blood, not purple blood, but the red blood that makes us white as snow. We plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus over the portals of our mind. I plead the blood over our bodies this morning. I plead the blood over our motives this morning. In the name of Jesus. What can white to my Santa? What can the see? What can what can what can wash away our sins? Nothing. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the Moshata. Run the The blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. The blood that makes every false god bow down. The blood that makes every demon in hell tremble. The blood that makes Buddha turn loose. The blood that makes Confucius turn loose. The blood that makes Krishna bow. The blood of Jesus. Come on. The blood of Jesus that makes Allah turn loose. We lift up the name that is above every name. The name that is a Moshata. That every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on. Call that name Jesus. 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 Our burden bearer. Jesus. Our heavenly Lord Shire. Our heavenly Lord Shara. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is no other name whereby men can be saved. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, come on, get that name in your mouth and fill this room. Fill this room with that name. Hey, we know the conference center has been prayed over. We know we prayed in the hotel, but find the tabernacle here with us. Shut up. If you show up, oh God, we know that miracles, signs and wonders, healings and deliverances are imminent in the name of Shia, Jesus, 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 for the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Come on. Our gifts are ineffective unless it comes through that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, hey, some of y'all ain't calling him. Don't make me jump off the stage this early. Jesus, hey, under my soko. Jesus, hey, the 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 Jesus, he'll fill you if you call him right. Jesus, Oh, Jesus, come on. Jesus, Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star, the bishop of our souls. Jesus, help! Jesus. He's the only one that can save our nation. Jesus, turn us back to you. Bring us down on our knees. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and heal the land that Jesus healed this morning. Jesus heal today. Jesus. Nobody gets the glory but you. Nobody gets the credit but you. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Jesus, he come on, shout! He come the la 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 la, shout out! He come the 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 Osaya! He come on, so come to the man, the the Asia! He the man, so come shout out! He pass on the 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 Oshamata! Jesus, some of y'all tired already. Jesus, we got a little ways to go, but Jesus, we call you right early. He the Messiah, move in the room, move up and down every row. Move up and down the aisle. We dismiss every demonic plot, every ploy, every plan of the enemy, and we loose the power of the Holy Ghost wherever you are right now. Whether you're at home, on your job, in your vehicle, if you're in a hospital bed, if you're in a hospice center, if you're in a jail cell, we lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Let's call this name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 Bosaya. the Bible says in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, that Paul and Silas prayed and praised, and doors, prison doors, locked doors opened up. This is the year that we're celebrating 5784. The Hebraic number. That represents door, not just open door, but door, because there's some doors that you need to shut. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Jesus, 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 hey, hey, come on, door, yeah, he come to the bow shot, Jesus, Jesus, oh. Shatter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he Dislodge that devil that won't come out of your house. Generational.
generational curses that have to bow. Bloodline in the most incantations, witchcraft movements, warlocks, sorcerers, mediums. The devil is a liar. We plead the blood and we call the name of Jesus. Jesus, every clairvoyant, every necromancer, every psychic. We call on the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. Shut the door to demonic access. Shut the door. When the devil have infringed upon the people of God long enough, I speak rest to you. I speak peace over you. The devil have disturbed you long enough. Shaking your bed. You can't rest. But the devil is a liar. The Bible says that we've labored for a while but there remaineth a rest for the people of God so I take authority over your dream center I take authority over Shatai every spirit of succubus loose here every spirit of incubus loose here every spirit wife every spirit husband those of you all that have experienced sexual activity even in your sleep that's succubus that's incubus a man on top of you Tabashaya, a woman on top of you your hormones out of control I just felt that in the Holy Ghost but I drive that devil out I drive him out of your sleep I drive him out of your subconsciousness God cleanse our souls God scrub our souls scrub our minds our wheels our emotions our intellect our ability in the name of Jesus oh Jesus Jesus, Jesus, Mahasha, Come on, church. Jesus, Jesus. I bind the wandering mind. Bring your mind in. I bind the wandering mind. Father, you said, let this mind that's in you also be in us in the name of Jesus. Transform our minds. Transfigure our minds in the name of Jesus. In the name of Messiah. Lord, I thank you. I'm sorry, we done moved past adoration. But God, I ask that you touch the left and the right sides of our brains. In the name of Jesus. That devil that have stored images. That devil that have stored pictures. That won't allow you to move forward. I bind the devil on every side. And I send them back to the pits of hell. From whence he come. I call Shatta. Loose here. I come against trauma. Traumatic events. I come against trauma. Traumatic events. I bind triggers. Things that happen. That set you back in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Fragrances. Smells. Words. Vocabulary. Places. That conjure up thoughts. That conjure up memories. The devil is a liar. I dislodge it from your being. I dislodge it from your preference from your presence come on out of that devil we break every soul tie we break every blood covenant we break every sexual covenant in the name of Jesus the devil is a liar break 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 in the name of Jesus break 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 he can't go to the most shot at the man so called break 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 you can't move forward because that devil keeps you going around in circles but I pray according to Deuteronomy 2 2 and 1 you've gone around this mountain long enough and from this place you're going northward you're going upward you're of it I break every cycle I break every pattern in the name of Jesus I plead the blood right now I plead the blood of Jesus I command every demonic plot to break I command every demonic ploy to break I command every demonic scheme to break in the name of Jesus break 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 you're not going back home with these same issues you're not going back 
home with these same habits. Father, I pray, Father, that you break every habit, every addiction, every sin in the name of Jesus. I pray according to Galatians 5, every work of the flesh. Yeah, I pray according to 1 Corinthians 6 that you break all manners of sin, all manners of addictions, all manners of patterns in the name of Jesus. I lose purity amongst us. I lose sanctification in this room. Come out from among them. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. Father, cleanse our hands. Father, cleanse our hearts. Who can ascend to the hills of the Almighty? He that have clean hands. He that has a pure heart. Cleanse us. Cleanse our minds, cleanse our souls. Oh Lord, cleanse, cleanse our hearts. In the name of Shaddai, He come to the Osoya. There we are. Jesus, 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 the habit breaker. Jesus, the addiction fixer. Come on, Lady Diosha. Come on, church. Come on, ignite. The devil is a liar. God sent you here to break that thing that have tried to hinder and harass you. But I decree and declare that the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost arrest you right now. Father, from the north, south, east, and the west, I thank you to the Moshiach. We are cycle breakers. Yeah. Yeah, Mosata. The generational curse stops here. Yabasikandai. We break it. We break it in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Jesus. Come on. He that devil that have tried to keep us angry that have tried to keep us bitter that devil that have tried to keep us mad the spirit of malice and unforgiveness I bind the devil and send it back to the pits of hell I send it to the abyss the outer dark dry place for it to never return again father give us the ability to address the issue with you and we thank you from this day forward yes God help me help me help me yeah that's what you need to pray God help Lord we pray according to Psalms 12 and 1 the first two words help Lord help us help us to leave it help us to forget it help us to forsake it in the name of Jesus we will not be held back we will not be held up in the name of Jesus how can we ask you for forgiveness and we ourselves have not forgiven Lord help us to be right in your eyes Jesus we need your help I pray God for those that have been hurt those that have been offended those that have been disappointed those that have been let down yes the hurt is real but Lord today give us the ability to make up our minds to walk with you make up our Messiah make up our minds to stay with you we will not be held up we will not be held back not another moment not another second come on church don't lose your Messiah don't lose your cry don't lose it Jesus help another Messiah we plead the blood over our hearts I release a healing salve for every pastor every leader every parent every child every family member every friend every associate that perhaps 
perhaps betrayed you, let you down. And the Messiah, I plead the blood of Jesus, the blood over your heart, the blood over your heart. I'm the Boshai. I plead, I pray and ask your forgiveness on behalf of fivefold ministry gifts all over the world. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, bishops and such. I apologize on their behalf. If it was me that offended you, I apologize. But this is the day, this is the year we cannot be held up by anything or anybody. This is the year that we got to let it go. So Father, help us move forward without a conversation. Help us move forward without an apology because forgiveness is not impended upon the other person. It's dependent upon you. And this day, we make up our minds, Lord, in your presence to let it go. I'm the Messiah. So I rebuke the spirit of retaliation, the spirit of revenge, the spirit of sabotage, the spirit of revisitation that that enemy will try to make you hear it again, see it again, know it again. Loose! I command the devil to loose his hold right now. Loose here. I'm the Bashiach. Devil, your time is up. Your time is over. I'm the Masata. I decree and declare you've been served dismissal papers. We evict you. We eradicate you in the name of Jesus. I veto, disallow, disapprove everything that the devil have tried to use against you. He's an accuser of the brethren and the only thing he got on your record is that you won't let it go. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, we make up our minds to let it go. We're going to labor right there for about 30 seconds. I just want you to say, Lord, help me let it go in Jesus' name. Lord, help me let it go in Jesus' name. Lord, help me let it go, Boshai, in Jesus' name. No conversation, no closure. You don't have to send a text. You don't have to make a call. You don't have to send a voice memo. It's over. Lord, we serve the devil a benediction today. May the Lord watch between me and thee. Wow, wow. While we're absent, one from a bullshot in the Messiah. Devil, we kick you out. We kick you out. We kick you out. We kick it to Moshandai. You can't get a new relationship. You can't find nobody else because you're holding them hostage. You can't get a better job because you're holding them hostage. You can't move forward in ministry because you're holding them hostage. Loose here. Loose in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, attend unto our cry. Oh Lord, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. I know in the Gregorian calendar we start over in December, but in the Christian calendar, at the Messiah, we start in September. This is your new year. This is your exodus. This is an entrance unto a new hour, a new moment, a new era, a new decade. In the Namoshata, can you just do me a favor? Look at your neighbor and prophetically declare to them, Happy New Year. I said, look at your neighbor. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, happy new year. I'm the double shy for the one time for the person that didn't say it. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The first law of the prophetic is you got to obey. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, happy new year new start new beginning new day i'm not going back the way i came i saw you last night on the live i'm not going back to philly i'm not going back to virginia i'm not going back to new york i'm not going back to louisiana i'm not going back to mississippi i'm not going back to tennessee i'm not going back to illinois i'm not going back to missouri i'm not going back to washington dc i'm not going back the same way I came I I, I refuse
choose to leave here in the same position Lord make me over Lord make me ow ow make me a new this is not just another service this is not just another revival this is not just another conference just another conference I am here to restart to reset to renew to recharge in the name of Jesus help me Lord my assignments this morning is to pray against monitoring spirits spirits that have tried to watch your pantomime demons devils devices that have kept up with your every move there's some of you here that feel like I can't move forward every time I move forward it looks like the same demon I dealt with last season hey Hondo Boshata shows up I can't do anything without the enemy trying to imitate, trying to frustrate. But there are monitoring spirits. It's called demonic surveillance. The enemy has a camp of imps and enemies that survey and evaluate your every move. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray against every monitoring spirit every spirit that monitors and records to give a report to its senders father i rebuke the devil everywhere every spirit of the monitor the every peeping tom spirit every improper in, in invalid illegal demon that have had rights unto our lives and even prayer closets devil you are a liar you've stood outside of the prayer room waiting for us to come out but lord i pray according to psalms 91 and the october shot 91 and 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high god lord take us into your secret chambers Lord, take us into your private abode that we would begin to labor and pray without the infringement of hell. Monitoring spirits are a type of divination. Devil, you are a liar. According to Acts 16 and 16, there was a spirit that followed them to prayer. There was a damsel that followed them to prayer. There was a spirit of divination that followed you to prayer that comes with false prophetic words sounds accurate but it's illegal the difference between a prophet and a psychic is where they get their information so Lord we shut the back door Lord we pray that you cancel every illegal door that was opened in the name of Jesus I shut it the door opened by every witch the door opened by every warlock the door opened by every soothsayer the door opened by every false prophet the door opened by every familiar spirit in the name 
name of Jesus God I pray according to Amos 3 that he would do nothing in the earth unless he first reveals his secrets to his servants the prophet and while we're not all prophets we are all prophetic because we serve a prophetic God so Lord calibrate our ears God calibrate our eyes that we can see you that we can hear you sensitize our heart that we can feel the impressions of the Holy Ghost snatch our names off of demonic altars snatch our names out of conversations snatch our names out of discussions in the name of Jesus father I plead the blood I release a prophetic firewall around these people of God today the devil is a liar people call you I got a prophetic word I got something that the Lord told me the devil is a liar we are not hungry for prophecy if you send it Lord we receive but we let the devil know don't play with me yeah Shata. Yes, God. I pray according to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, just like the Shunammite woman, when the prophet said, you shall have a son, she said, don't play with me. I didn't ask you for this. So, Lord, we release an indignant, authentic anointing upon our lives. Put it on our disposition. Put it in our spirits. Don't play with me. I wish I had somebody that would open your mouth and join me as a chorus in here devil don't play with me devil don't play with me don't call my name don't call me out don't lay hands on me in the most shot in the name of Jesus I pray God that tell the Messiah that we raise up in kingdom authority we cast out every devil every devil that have tried to track us every Jesus. You get ready to upset somebody. You get ready to upset somebody because your words are going to be come out of that woman in the name of Jesus. Come out of that man in the name of Jesus. I tell my soul, I command you to go. So every spirit, every spirit, every spirit of the witch, of the voodoo doctor, every spirit of the most shot, of the magician, black magic, white magic, gray magic, the devil is a liar every gray witch every big witch every wicked witch every Christian witch we bind your hand we sing you back to the pits of hell every Jezebel that tries to usurp the authority of the prophet every Athaliah that comes after the inheritance of the prophet every Delilah that comes to seduce prophetic people every python spirit that tries to squeeze the life out of the people of God every leviathan spirit that tries to block the deliverance of the people of God leviathan a prideful devil bow in the name of Jesus come on call that name come on call that name come on call that name yet not Mongolia he come to the bullshit every crystal man say crystal man say the devil is a liar yet the Messiah palm reading the devil is a liar soul watching the devil is a liar we bind the enemy soul gazing looking in your eyes trying to see the future I command the blood of Jesus to show up on the radar pass over us in the Namosikai UNF, let's go to F sharp. Tell your neighbor we're shifting. We're moving to another level. We're moving to another dimension. Where we were, we will not be. The devil is a liar. I take authority over the atmosphere. I take authority over the hemisphere. I take authority over the stratosphere. I take authority over the troposphere. The devil is a liar. And I command that the presence and the glory of God captivate, captable shot in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Devil, don't play with me. Devil, don't play 
with us in the name of Jesus we confess every sin and iniquity that gives the devil right to fellowship and monitor me I give up every ungodly thing come on pray with me I give up every ungodly thing that have given the devil permission to follow me that's why you got to be careful where you go that's why you got to be careful what you listen to that's why you got to be careful what you watch spirits are real demons are real God is a spirit he was never born so he can never die spirits are transferable so father I disrupt the transference of spirits that came through TV came through radio came through the phone came through social media came through control came through came through conversation I disrupt and I plead the blood I plead the blood I stand in the gap the devil is a liar I'm the he come to the Boshaya in the name of Jesus and I pray according to second Kings the sixth chapter the 18th verse smite our enemies with blindness smite our enemies with blindness let our enemies not be able to see discern or to know where we're headed smite the devil with blindness come on pray with me Lord smite the devil with blindness he will not see what's coming I decree and declare that there's an army of fire that there's chariots of fire surrounding us in the name of Jesus I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to disarm to destroy everything that have held up our possessions every Satanist every familiar spirit every ancestral spirit appearing in our dreams I command you to die die I drive out every peeping Tom I drive out every snatcher I drive out every taker devil give up the ground devil give up the ground devil give up the ground I'm double shut your time is up we serve you notice on this day 15th day of September at 9 32 Central Standard Time I command every timing peeping time monitoring spirit to turn loose I rebuke every symbol every emblem that will show up in your sleep strange birds cats strange eyes dreaming of houses without windows people speaking pointing fingers at you somebody recording you people mimicking you I rebuke the spirit of harassment and torment and I lose the power of the Holy Ghost I command every demon that have tried to hinder and harass what's to come to turn loose now and I break dams in the spirit I command the rivers of God to flow I command the rivers of God to flow believe on me as the scriptures have said out of your belly out of your belly out of your belly some of y'all want to be entertained I didn't come to entertain you I came to pray for you I came to pray with you some of y'all looking all indignant and deep come on and pray I command the rivers to flow out of your belly I command the rivers to flow out of your spirit I lose discernment I lose prophetic insight I lose prophetic foresight I lose the gift of prophecy I lose the word of knowledge I lose the word of wisdom I lose the discerning of spirits in the name of Jesus I lose diverse kinds of tongues 
Shia. I lose the interpretation of those tongues. See what happens when heaven is trying to invade earth. You'll start speaking in tongues. God will take you up because he's trying to burn something. In the Moshiach, in the Moshiach, he come to the Moshiach in the sphere of influence. Some people say, I only speak when I'm in church. But you got to learn how to pull out your arsenal and speak in tongues because you're able to confuse the devil. It's a download coming from heaven. And then interpretation is decoding what God said. I dare you for the next 20 seconds to lose tongues in this room. Let's go. I feel fire. I feel fire. Oh, Some of y'all don't feel comfortable because you don't feel the unction. Oh, my he condo, I command your spirit to be unctioned right now. If you don't speak in tongues, just begin to say, Thank you, Jesus. 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 He'll feel you right now. You see that? Hey, 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 hey. See, when you begin to come on the Moshiach, the Bible says, Pastor, that we don't know how to pray for ourselves as we are. But if we pray, if we pray in the Holy Ghost, moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered. I'm in Romans 8 and 26 now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I decree and declare new tongues, fresh tongues, tongues of war, tongues of fire. Ho! Shanda na na yeah 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 come on three more seconds devil you've been uncovered Genesis 1 let there be light I pray according to Genesis 1 let there be light everywhere there was a devil that was trying to hide I command exposure to come in the name of Jesus every secret devil every secret devil every hiding spirit let there be light you've been moving trying to figure it out what's going on I rebuke deception I come against manipulation in the name of Jesus you've been he you hear words but you feel a different spirit but I dare you to pray Lord let there be light when there's something you can't figure out when there's something that you're trying to figure out who's holding me I pray according to Genesis 1 and three let there be light I said let there be light oh let oh he both shot I feel Holy Ghost help now let you see let there be light you want to pray for your pastor you want to pray that they see those people that are infringing, that's moving illegally. Father, let my pastor see according to the light. Let there be light. Cleanse 
our motives, cleanse our mentalities, cleanse our desires, cleanse our hearts in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 soul. You won't be followed. You won't be followed. You're going home free. You can pray again. The devil's been rebuked. He won't be able to mimic you again. Why is that? Give us, oh God, a new praise. Give us, oh God, a new worship. Give us, oh God, a new sound. Give us, oh God, new tongues. Give us, oh shine. Give us, oh God, new devotion, new commitment, new consecration. Give us fresh oil. I pray, according to Ecclesiastes, get the throttle, get the flies out of our oil. Flies that stink, flies that carry trash. Yes, yes, Lord, help us to endure the crushing. Help us to endure the pressing. Help us to endure the beating. Help us to endure the shaking. Help us. And the Messiah to stay in the process. Oh Lord, oh Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. that spirit that's been following your children that spirit that's been following your grandchildren that spirit that's been following your spouse that spirit that's been following your family it's been broken in the video shut break it break it break it break it Break it, break it, break it, shut up, rub up, 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 up,
the cover. I ain't done. This ain't a filler. This is necessary. There's a breaking anointing. Get back. of the open door the decade of the open open mouth Haya, the year of doors the decade of the mouth physics says sound travels at 761 miles an hour bishop death and life lies in the power of the tongue what we need to do for the next moment because as sure as you can cause things to live by what you say the Bible says and the worlds were framed by what he said Proverbs 18 and 21 says death and life lie in the power of the tongue if you can create you can certainly cause things to die the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has allowed me to declare the acceptable year of the Lord if there are things acceptable, 
there were things unacceptable shatter for the next 30 seconds we're getting ready to pray for our family Haya, for our children for our spouses for our businesses Ramando Rabakata if sound travels at 761 miles per hour while we're here in Chicago an hour from now my words will be in Florida but physics says the louder I shout the faster the vibration travels and it picks up acceleration hey Hondo Rabakotaba what I want us to do is lift up a shout I want you to call out your children's name call out your spouse's name call out your family's name your business name your ministry name come on for the next 15 seconds let's go Jesus, I bind the devil on every side and I loose the power of the Holy Ghost. Everything that have tried to harass and attack our children, family, associates, business, ministry, we decree and declare it's unacceptable. Devil, you are a liar. I decree and declare that we are walking in the things of God. Hallelujah. We are walking in the blessings of the Lord. I rebuke lack. I rebuke Osha. I rebuke mental frustration. I rebuke mental disease. In the name of Jesus, it's unacceptable. I come against depression. I come against anxiety. In the name of the Lord, and I loose the power of the Holy Ghost according to Isaiah 10 and 27. That the anointing destroys the yoke. Every yoke that the devil has tried to put around your neck. I command that it break in Jesus' name. Hey, Ty, be destroyed in the name of the Lord. My family shall be saved. They shall be named amongst the sanctified. My business, my business shall prosper. We're moving out of the red into the green. We're moving out of the red into the black. I decree and declare new clientele, new contracts, new ordeals. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every ministry, new people, new harvest, new doors, new platforms, new revelation, fresh manner. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that spouse. I rebuke the devil now, the spirit of divorce, the spirit of separation. The devil is a liar. I lose the power of the Holy Ghost come on we pray for our family save sanctify deliver set free make whole in the name of Jesus and we give you the praise come on we decree our families shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord scholarships school loans paid off come on we're praying for those family members come on live on every spirit that have tried to frustrate their destiny i command it to die 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 i know the thoughts i think towards you says god thoughts of good and not evil to give you and expect it in. Come on and tell them I'm the old shire. In the name of In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family member stuck in that wayward, wayward living, wayward lifestyle. Come out. This is your day of deliverance. Break the habit. The habit. The habit of pharmacia. The habit of narcotics. Every weed thing. Every marijuana devil. Every cocaine devil. Every heroin devil. Every opio devil die in the name of the old shatter. Rupo soon that tire. He cut ta da 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 da
finances. I pray for increase. I'm almost out of time, but I got more things to pray. I pray for increase, overflow, surplus, more than enough. The bounty of God in Jesus' name. I thank you. Our vats will never run dry. Rebates, refunds, returns, class action, lawsuit settlements in your favor. Back child support given in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Hobashaya, your name being written in wills, your name being written in life inheritance in the name of Jesus. I decree cash, cash transactions, cash apps, sales, Venmo's, PayPal's in the name of Oshaya, in the name of Jesus, created positions for the people of God. I decree and declare poverty won't be named among you. I pray according to Psalms 66, men and women have written over your head. You've been through the fire. You've been through the flood. But God, he's getting ready to walk you into. Thank you, Bishop Jacobs. Your wealthy place. I wish I had somebody here. Grab your neighbor and just take two steps and say, I'm pulling you into your wealthy place. Wealth and riches are in your house. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity be within your palaces. In the name of Jesus, you shall have an endless supply of money. That go to money. The money coming in Jesus' name. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, northwest, southeast, southwest. Money coming. Money coming. Money coming. And it's coming in a hurry. Money coming. I decree and declare you will have no lack. Your ministries will overflow. Your businesses shall overflow. I see the money. I see the money. I see the money. The money's coming. The money's coming. The money's coming. The money's coming. In Jesus' name. Money's coming. I see camels. Here come the trucks. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Money. It's coming. Money. It's coming. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Jehovah Jireh. My provider. Money. Money. Money to the old shire. Contracts. Vendor favor. Yes. I pray for the entrepreneur. I pray for the innovator I pray for the creator I pray for the executive in Daya Rubatai you are the head and not the tail above only and not beneath hey, is there anybody here that says money money coming back on the money I said my it's the quickest way to your destiny. Your mouth is transportation to your future. Declare it out of your mouth. I see the money. Turn the key on your business. Money coming. I see it in my ministry. Money coming. Money. Oh, no, no. Ow. Increase prosperity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that got a few minutes left. Got to be responsible. The last thing. Just tell your neighbor, 
and say neighbor you're sitting next to a wealthy worshiper you're sitting next to a wealthy praiser I got one more thing to pray but tell your neighbor I feel like I owe God foot worship because money is mine when you get back home scholarships paid off debt free school loans yeah grant money yeah oh I can see it private schooling approved I said this is a year of the door we open the door to success and prosperity maybe you don't have a child in college I got one got another one that want to go to Berkeley maybe you went back to school like me 40 plus in school debt free we're going straight to the drive one two one two three let's i said mother Put your foot on it. Let's go.
work done. I got eight minutes left. I'm not the preacher. But prayer and praise does work. It is an equation for open doors. I said prayer and praise is an equation to get doors open. So some of y'all. Just a check while you're dancing. Oh, it's my travail. It's my prayer. decree and declare open doors new doors better doors fresh doors praise him doors shut in the name of Jesus Lord I release the fire of the Holy Ghost fire I release it Holy Spirit transform us Holy Spirit purify us Holy Spirit set us aflame with the love of God I decree and declare fire all over your body may you be ignited I command you to be ignited ignited in your spine ignited in your cervical area ignited in your skull ignited in your jawbone ignited in your chest ignited by fire in your ribs fire in your breastbone all in your arms fire in your shoulder blade in your collarbone in your clavicle fire in your hands fire in your wrist bones fire in your pelvis fire in your hip bone fire in your leg fire in your feet I command the fire Fire! Fire! All over your 
Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. Hey, in Jesus' name we pray. Lady Mickles, ask him when he want to sign. I want to push, since we've started the Ignite Conference, Prophet Mickles has embraced my vision for what I wanted this hour of prayer to be. And he has never let us down. And as long as he could come, we're going to have him to always lead us in prayer during our Ignite Conference. He has a book. That's right. Clap your hands. But I want you to hear me. Why? Because y'all know what I say. I talk, you praise. He has a book called Securing the Cabin. I want everybody to buy this book. He'll be out there signing whatever time he tell us. And I want y'all to go out there and I want you to push it. But while we're clapping, will you put it in the room? I can't hear you. Will you put the clap in the room? Jesus' name we pray. Oh, yeah. Jesus' name we pray. In your name. Jesus' name we pray. In your name. Jesus' name we pray. Do it in your name. Jesus' name we pray. No other name matters. Jesus' name we pray. From the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. No other name matters. Jesus' name we pray. From the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name. In the name of 
open your mouth and give him a shout all over this building. Come on, give him a shout all over this building. We don't need no music. We got the Holy Ghost. We don't need no music. We got the Holy Ghost. We don't need no music. Everybody who got it, lift your hands and give God a shout. All over this place. Go ahead and run. Lift your hands all over this building. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, let the sound of worship fill this room. We love you, Lord. Come on, come on, fill this room. Come on. We love you, we love you, we love you. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship. Come on, all over the building. We have come into this house, gathered. Come on, lift your hands and say it. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship. Lift your hands all over this place. Our So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. And concentrate. Concentrate on him. Hey, hey, hey. you're the Lord. Come on, that's what you lift your hands. So forget about yourself. And concentrate. So come on, come on, lift your hands so Yes, concentrate.
worship fill this room. Let the worship fill this room. Let the worship fill the room. Lift your hands. Lift your hands all over this place. I want you to stretch your hands as high as you want God to pull you. Somebody bow before him.
water so long, so long it had to be. This is if you love him. And he's in love with me. I'm in love with Jesus. And he's in love with me. Oh, I'm in love with Jesus. No music, Christian, come on. when the audience takes it from the praise team. That's how you know it is the song of the Lord in the room.
If you believe that, stretch your hands and give him the best adoration and worship you could give him. Come on. Come on. Come on, 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 that's it, come on, that's it, Zion, supposed to be uh, promoting one of our vendors and I, I don't go nowhere. I still want you to promote. Give me your business name real quick as apostles come in. Just get, and I still want, I want, I want to make sure we support all of our people, but I, but when the Lord is in the room, you just got to let God do. Prophet Marcus Mickles has prayed a glory down in you. And I don't want to stand in the way of the prophet. I want God to do whatever he wants to do. Hallelujah. We're going to promote, amen. We're going to have him come back. But just in case God still takes us, coachdesign.com. He's out there with amazing clothes and amazing suits and ties and socks for men. I want you all to go and I want you to support him, amen, uh, while uh, you are here. Prophet Marcus Mickles will be out there signing books. Amen. After, after this service, I want you all to go and support this great man of God. But we thank God all the way from Memphis. We have my friend and my brother. And as I told y'all last night, he is my friend, friend. And I want you all to receive him. Can you stand on your feet? Amen. To all the pastors and all of the great mighty men and women of God that's in this place. I love you. Dr. Nichols, I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. I want you to receive this kingdom voice. Somebody lost your phone. They've been texting you the whole time I've been up here <clears throat> in worship. Amen. And so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, so come get your phone. It ain't nothing on, on here. Amen. And so y'all come get it. You, got it. you didn't crack the back of it. Bless your heart. Amen. The new one just came out. But oh, that's your phone? That's it. All right. Come on. They're going to find it. Amen. So listen, but we thank God all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. We thank God for this great man of God who pastors the Reformation Church. The one and only Apostle Brandon Clack. Make some noise for him as he comes in Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap those hands for Jesus, everybody. Come on, you can do better than that. He's the lover of our soul. He's the reason why we have come today to gather to be in his presence. Come on, clap those hands for Jesus, everybody. Amen. Father, thank you. Your word is life to us. And without your word, we have no hope. Lord, I'm praying that you would unlock revelation for us this morning that we would have a glimpse into the future of the things that you are saying to our hearts. Lord, thank you that you have brought us to a place to ignite us, that we might be of some kingdom use to the things that you're doing. So Father, I'm praying the person next to me needs a miracle. And I'm asking, Father, that you would meet needs this morning. And I'm praying, Lord, that you would not only meet needs, but by the time they get back to their house, I'm asking for an unusual peace to be flooding their doorstep. And I promise you, Lord, that they'll act a plumb fool and give you praise if you solve the top three problems that are wearing them out. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, how would you act if God solved your problems today? That's the wrong neighbor. They don't know what a problem is. 
Look at the other neighbor and say, how would you worship him if he solved your problem today? Just 10 seconds. I need some worshipers in the room. It's already here. I'm going to holler in a second, but I want you to worship him. Come on, how would you act if the lump was gone? How would you act if your teenager came back home? How would you act if your spouse ripped up the divorce papers? How would you act if the doctor said no chemo is necessary? Come on, worship him. Come on, your neighbor's not sure if they believe God. So if you worship him, you'll be convincing enough. Come on, worship him. I'm not just talking to the building, I'm talking to you online. God's about to come across that camera lens. Right across your coffee table. Something supernatural. It's breaking out from Miami to Milwaukee. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this room. Before you sit down, good leadership is hard to find. And my brother, Pastor Mark, said it so eloquently yesterday. And I just want to add on that when God needed somebody to come and trailblaze on how not to be afraid when the world shut down, Bishop Brandon Jacobs decided to turn the volume up a little bit louder. I'm so grateful for his leadership and his tenacity. Will you thank God for my brother, Bishop Brandon Jacobs, please? Can you thank God loud so that in his dreams he can hear heaven? And if you love him, you gotta love his wife more. Can you thank God for Lady Vivian? Yeah. Remain standing for the reading of the word of God. Prophet Mickles, you my brother, it's good to see you and your lovely wife. To all of the other pastors and fivefold ministry office gifts, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. To our online audience, thank you for worshiping with us. God's gonna do something for you. So you just stay connected. If Jesus did not have to go into the Roman centurion's house, I don't have to come to yours. I can partner with the word of God and something can grab your situation by the throat. Strangle the hell out of it. Amen. All right, Exodus chapter 1. My beautiful wife, Christabel, she sends her love. I promise I'll bring her with me next time. Exodus chapter 1. If you'll join me, I'd like you to meet me at verse number 20. I'm just going to read a couple of verses, just two. I'm in the English Standard Version, so mine might read a little bit different than yours. But we'll end up ultimately at the same spot. Exodus chapter 1, verse number 20. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Father, thank you. Your word is blessed. And we're hungry and ready to hear what you have to say in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a producer. That's the wrong neighbor. They're an employee. Look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a producer. Never mind. Lay your hands on your own heart and say, now you know good and well you're a producer. If you believe that, you can clap on the way down to your seat. I'm a producer. I'm excited about being at Ignite Conference. It is in my humble estimation, a gathering of believers where God has desired and designed to breathe upon the places of your soul that you have possibly allowed to grow dormant. And when you get into atmospheres and moments like this where the presence of the Lord is so tangibly strong, it would behoove you to open up your spirit wide and to grab the things that are not being said in English. What I mean by that is, is that it is possible as I walk through the word of God that the Holy Spirit is going to begin to say things on the inside of you concerning the situations that you are currently dealing with that no one knows about. That is the power of the preaching of the word of God. It is not just the beautiful context and the rhythm of which we can hear the Bible, but it is also that the Bible 
Bible lives in me. That when I hear the word of God, a witness is born. And I begin to connect my faith, not with ancient words, but with living bread. And that's important for us to grab, especially in the time frame and a day and an age where the word of God is trying to be excommunicated, not just from society, but unfortunately from the Lord's church. And that's quite confusing to me that we would take out his standards and the word of God in an attempt to build what we think is best. So it is important that when we just read a couple of verses that we have a deeper understanding of the contextual value of what those verses are talking about. And this is the part where we jump into our narrative where we're going to find that the book of Exodus is really, as you know, just coming straight from uh, on the doorstep, if you will, on the back porch of the book of Genesis. And in Genesis, we are going to find a theme, a narrative that God created everything. Let me just be very clear. God created everything. Yes, not only did God create everything, but he included a people for himself. And you did not evolve from an animal. You came out of the handiwork of God Almighty. And these people that God created, they decided over time to be disobedient and rebellious. And they are convinced, if you will, by a serpent. And, and some scholars would even deem this a serpent king. They, they reference uh, that Lucifer is the god of this world. And it is possible in some themes that he can be even looked at as that. And they are convinced, the people, Adam and Eve, are convinced that by this serpent king, that it is uh, supposed to be this way to leave God. And they should leave God to scratch the cravings of their own ambition. As the serpent is talking to Eve, he starts to plant these seeds in her that obeying God is keeping you from an evolution and God is trying to do that to keep superior reign over you. And he is so convincing in the conversation that she does take of the fruit in interest to see what God was keeping her for. This is just my introduction, but I cannot resist the temptation to encourage you that when God tells you what you can do, it will ultimately lead to what you can't do. And if we're not careful, we will strip naked the barriers that God has given us. Please hear me. Without a religious lens, I need to communicate to you that there are some things you just shouldn't do. Man, man. There, there, there are some things, if you are going to walk close with Jesus Christ, that it is a loud announcement that because I'm with him, I'm not with that. And if we're not careful, the human experience will begin to draw us into this never never land of fantasy wondering what we're missing out just by exclusively being with Jesus yeah. and this serpent convinces Eve that this is ultimately what she should do to see what's going to happen she convinces her husband and then the results of their disobedience turns into persecution and slavery from sin God is not persecuting them but sin is a persecutor Sin is slavery. Sin, sin is a shackle. Sin is a taskmaster. And so God, in his foreknowledge, begins a conversation about a womb. Although he is beginning to issue out the byproduct and the curse attached to disobedience and sin, just brief through the introduction, they begin to see that being in sin now means, what I love about this is that it's not just the end all be all. God starts talking about a propitiation. That's just a big word for a way out. That's, that's it, you know, a way out. And God starts speaking to the womb. God uses the womb as a door. This is a door that is about to open up wide. Not just for personal pleasure, but an open door is an indication that God is about to breathe a solution into the chaos. He says, get ready. Up out of this womb is going to come a seed. 
And this seed is going to crush the serpent's head, although he may bruise his heel. God then selects a family. Hallelujah. God is in love with families. He selects a family which he can communicate his covenant dealings amongst his people. Although his people will be perpetually waiting on this seed of the woman to deliver them, there's going to be foreshadows, small breadcrumbs that God's promise is sure and on the way. What he does is he selects a family. And in selecting a family, he puts his hand on a man. He puts his hand on Abram. He tells Abram all of the powerful promises from a covenantal lens of what he's going to do for this man's family that will ultimately turn into God's family. He is talking to Abram essentially about the kingdom of God. He's telling Abram that as far as you can see and as many of the stars as you can lay your eyes on, so it shall be that you will have seed. That seed is going to come through the womb of a woman. And what I love about this is that Abram is going to give birth to a baby named Joseph. This Joseph is a type of deliverer. If I had time, I would walk you through the types and the shadows about how Joseph is nothing more than a beginning explanation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph is betrayed by his brothers. Joseph finds himself in prison. Joseph finds himself being elevated right next to the second seat of Pharaoh. Sound like somebody you know? And then Joseph comes up with a plan to dethrone famine and begin to issue out bread so everybody can leave. Well, all sin is, is a famine. And so it is, is that Jesus Christ in the plan of redemption begins to give you and I living bread and so Joseph begins to institute this plan he puts in place these edicts these opportunities for there to be provisional bread not just for his family but for all of the families suffering in famine something happens that we have to pay attention to that should give you and I a dose of sobriety the Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, then Joseph died. Right there, it is possible that your participation in the plan of God will stop, but the plan of God will not. Now right there, you didn't give God praise because you heard death, but what I told you is, is that no matter who may leave your life, if God has a promise over you, the plan keeps going even though you depart. Right there. Look at your neighbor and say, you can leave if you want to, but I'm going to be blessed as long as I'm breathing. Bible says that Joseph died Joseph died Joseph died and when he died verse number eight now there arose a new king over Egypt some believe that that word arose mean he might have taken position by force that he might not have just been in the bloodline but there might have been some foul play then a new king arose over Egypt that knew not Joseph this new king has no loyalties to the covenant opportunities that run through Joseph's bloodline. This new king has no sense of responsibility to uphold in a hall of fame status this Joseph that delivered us from famine. This new king is more so intoxicated with fear. This new king finds himself looking at the people of Israel and doing an assessment. He then goes on to come to the conclusion that these people are too mighty for us. These people are producing at a rapid rate. Pause. These people are only following the covenantal responsibilities that God gave to mankind. Be fruitful and multiply.
although they are not in the destined land that God has for these people they still have no excuse not to multiply right there although that they are not in the land of Canaan they are not around milk and honey they are not in the place where they were going to be they are in unfamiliar surroundings but unfamiliar surroundings do not stop multiplication I want to prophesy to you although you are looking around at unfamiliar surroundings divine multiplication is not geographically sensitive what I'm telling you is is that you can be here and prosper and you can transition into your next and prosper too stop being afraid of transition stop being afraid of going on to the next stop being afraid of new circles stop being afraid of new opportunities if he is the God that blessed you in 2017 he will be the God that breathes on you in 2024 so behold they grew mighty watch what happens the the children of Israel the people of Israel are just doing what God said to do multiply be fruitful they're also increasing in strength which is all a byproduct of God's plan for them. But what do you do when God's plan for you makes somebody else irritated? How do you handle that when my growth and my multiplication is making you irritated with me and I didn't even know you were upset? What do you do when you are minding your own business, becoming what God said, and then all of a sudden calculated snares and schemes, all opportunities against your reputation are being laid out behind your back because you obeyed God? They're multiplying, they're growing, and somebody behind their back has a staff meeting about how to mistreat them. It's quiet. They said, we're going to have a staff meeting. We, we need to start dealing shrewdly with these people. Don't just deal shrewdly with them, but I also want you to put constraints on them. Here is why. I am fearful, this is Pharaoh talking, I am fearful that if these people keep growing and an enemy arises against us, they will join forces with that enemy and we will lose the land that we believe belongs to us. Can I just pause? Because all of y'all in the narrative are not the children of Israel. I want to talk to a couple of pharaohs in the room that are bound by fear that you are about to lose territory because somebody else is growing in prominence. The quickest way to become irrelevant in 2023 and beyond is to be bound by envy yeah the one thing that is seemingly bleeding through your pulse the one thing that is screaming out on social media the one thing that has us intoxicated starting stuff that God's not breathing on is envy I'm envious I don't like that God is using you and because I no longer want to wait for him to touch me I'll step out and snatch a seat that I ain't served for look at your neighbor and say don't be envious don't be envious envy envy gives birth to fear and fear gives birth to murder. This Pharaoh is calculating how I can stop the productivity of a people that I can no longer put in a headlock. Can I just, I gotta leave this alone, but can I tell somebody your adversary can no longer put you in a headlock. Your neck has grown big and the yoke has slid off of you because of the anointing. You are about to produce at a level that your adversary said no to high five your neighbor and say produce anyhow lest they multiply almost there lest they multiply and if war breaks out they'll join our enemies fight against us and escape from our land therefore set taskmasters 
taskmasters. You know what a taskmaster is in 2023? A troll. Set taskmasters. Have somebody lurking and watching over them to make sure that we wear them out psychologically so much that they no longer want to reproduce. Taskmasters. Put somebody over them that makes the workload unnecessarily heavy so that physically they'll be too fatigued to reproduce task masters put somebody over them that's going to give them a runaround when you know clearly I'm gifted enough to solve this problem task masters if we are not careful man clack come on if we are not careful we will find ourselves worshiping at the throne of task masters screaming in the right key you ain't gonna say man task masters that know your zip code task masters that call for prayer meetings task masters that are only monitoring to make sure you don't outgrow their productivity task masters and before we point the finger at anybody I'm scared that some of us got a taskmaster in our belly insecurity and lies and always second guessing yourself never start oh here comes the taskmaster of procrastination yeah where you're always putting off for tomorrow what you should have done for today taskmasters and you can't out dance a taskmaster you can't outrun a taskmaster you have got to dethrone that thing with a willingness to produce they set taskmasters over them for the purpose of affliction with heavy burdens Jesus said place your burdens before me my burdens are easy what I'm telling you is here comes you need a Lord you need somebody who's over you but if you're not careful and God has to answer you when you say you have become your own Lord that's another sermon mm -mm. let's deal shrewdly with them let's set taskmasters over them let's afflict them with heavy burdens and let's make them build store cities for what we want built in our city. Be careful. Mm -mm -mm. Only building for someone else who is not pouring back into the empty places of your life. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Verse number 11, set the taskmasters. Watch what happened, verse 13. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves they were ruthless they were unwilling to relent they made them work as slaves and they made their lives bitter with hard service with brick and mortar and all kinds of work in the field their work was ruthless ruthless some of us are in a ruthless season right now you came to ignite you are dressed up but I need to touch the vein of pain and identify out loud what you won't put volume to it feels like trusting God has introduced me to a season of ruthlessness these people are in trouble because they trusted God's plan they bear his mark. They are his chosen people. And it's challenging being chosen and in a crisis at the same time. The Bible says that they are dealt with ruthlessly. And all manner of hard service is upon them. Verse 16. What I love about this is that they are still multiplying. Pay attention to the text. You got to read it slow. In spite of the ruthless dealings, the slavery, the heavy burdens, and the afflictions of a taskmaster, they are still producing, multiplying, 
and growing in strength. I am telling you that the seeming contradiction in the text is that in a humanistic mindset, if I'm going to grow, multiply, and be influential, I must be in the plan of God and on my way to vacation. But the truth about the kingdom of God is that there will be seasons where you have to be productive and in pain at the same time. I know you don't like that gospel, but I got to tell you the truth. I got to tell you the truth that if we're not careful, we'll be open, opening our altars, promising cash and Cadillacs and credit cards, hoping that people will come to Jesus for materialistic gain. But I got to tell you the truth. If you come to Jesus right now, you are going to open yourself up to having to be in pain and productive. I am not suggesting that the grace of God means more pain and and more tasks I'm not saying that I am saying that eternal salvation is free but your Bible also says that if you gonna reign with him come here clack you got to suffer with him too that there is an aspect of endurance that is escaping a generation that can google their solution instead of waiting for it there is something that is coming down the pipe that in 2024 you better know some endurance 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 endure hardness as a good soldier so all of this has been a precursor to what God is building in you he's building an endurance I gotta tell you the truth it will not always be surprise checks in the mail there will come some days when you come eye to eye with roast beef from two weeks ago and you've got to look that beef in the face with hunger pains and saying I would rather trust God with this limited meal than to go on a date with somebody that'll end up in a soul tie and she ain't supposed to be in. Keep your steak dinner if it means I keep my sanctification. High five your neighbor and say keep your sanctification. I just canceled somebody's dinner plans tonight. My God. After church. If we're not careful, we'll start accepting the bribes of hell. Angry with God that delayed breakthrough is still in my life. And I want to sober you real quick that you would not accept the instant gratification of sin because of what you think you deserve. Can I just put some pressure on this real quick? There is a mentality that because I deserve something and God is taking his time then I'll step out and create my own relief. If you step out and spell relief outside of the edicts of the word of God you now become bound to secular humanism. Don't have time. But if you're not careful you'll start doing what feels good instead of what faith's good you have got to be so committed to shutting this flesh down you can't cast flesh out you got to kill it and the way you kill it is you starve it when is the last time you told you no look at your neighbor and say no the answer is no you see how they ain't saying it look them right in the face and say hey the answer is no no extra cupcakes no extra sleepovers stop all that lying Stop all that cussing. The answer, my God, is no, 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 no. High five your neighbor and say no, say no, say no. It's a season of yes. The answer is no. In 2024, you're going to have to learn how to tell you no. 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 If God led us into Egypt to save us from famine, don't compromise now that the season has shifted. Wait for a deliverer to show up. The answer is no. So he could not stop them from multiplying, reproducing, Although he afflicted them. I, I hope you can hear what I'm prophesying to your belly. Don't stop.
stop multiplying just because the environment isn't conducive for ease. Don't stop growing just because someone's angry with your growth. Grow any how my god get around some like-minded people that are ready to grow come here children of israel i'm not gonna stress the text get around some like-minded people that are willing to be under the grace of god and grow also and grow any how let them laugh at you coming to summits and conferences during the day. Let them laugh and say that you dance too much. Let them laugh and say you cry and worship too much. Let them mock and laugh and identify it privately. That ain't nothing but a taskmaster. But behind your criticism is a man and a woman that refuses not to grow. You gotta grow anyhow. And so Pharaoh, he, uh, he gets irritated. Because he realizes that the constraints have not stopped the productivity. And now he results to more of a psychological tactic that he will make good on. And it's called a death threat. He says, from now on, you two midwives, come here. He says, here's what I want you to do since they're growing so much. We are going to, man, don't get in trouble. We, we, are go, we are going to have to kill the only other participant that can create a baby. Amen. We, in order to let genocide happen amongst the people multiplying, all we got to do is keep the same kind around them and they can't grow no more. Lord help me. That's all we got to do. All we have to do is essentially castrate them and make sure that if we remove the other necessary component that no matter what they do amongst themselves as long as they got the missing component they'll never multiply again no matter how much they may love the same kind of each other. So just take out one kind. It's in your Bible. Kill all the sons. Just kill the sons. And if you kill the sons, they can't grow no more. So they, he says to the midwives, when these Hebrew ladies start pushing, I want you to take those babies if they're boys. And I want you to kill them. If they're girls, leave them alone because they can't reproduce with each other. But if they're boys, you slaughter them. What I love about this is, is that even though this death decree is over their head of the children of Israel, one man still keeps looking one lady in the face and saying, my covenant responsibility my love for you is greater than the threats of what could happen if you get pregnant. You missed it. What I'm telling you is, don't allow the threats of a season to make you come out of intimacy with what God called you to do. Yeah, this is how the anointing dries up. When you start getting too nervous because the season gets tight and you start remixing the plan of God and putting in what makes you comfortable. So a man had to have looked at a woman and said, I'm not backing off of this just because there's a threat of what could be. Your Bible says that in the midst of persecution, there is still a push. Did you hear what I said? Lean forward, look at me. In the midst of persecution, these women are required to push. There is no induced labor. So all they have to rely on is when God allows the water to break. Can you imagine the psychological warfare of these mothers in the making as they are carrying around a baby with no sonogram to let them know if what I'm carrying is going to live past the next day. I can imagine that maybe fear over water breaking might have consumed them because they don't know. Am I about to lose a baby? Because 
because of somebody else's hatred for me right there I want to talk to somebody that is carrying a dream carrying a move carrying a movement carrying some songs carrying relationships and you're too afraid to push because you don't know if it's going to live after the yes all I know is is that Pharaoh tried to get a hold of the help I don't know if you ever know what it has been to feel like you needed help but somebody got to your help before you said things about you that might make them hurt you you ain't never been there I don't know if you but but that's what happens with these midwives you all are in the middle ground and in the middle ground there is God's purpose and an evil king's desire right there I want to talk to the intercessors that stand in the middle ground between God's purpose and an evil plot here is the only way you will be an effective intercessor in the years to come. You must have the fear of the Lord. Do you fear God? The Bible says that these midwives were so encapsulated with the fear of the Lord that when the babies started coming out, they looked at the womb with the fear of the Lord. They realize we can't keep killing these sons because the fear of the Lord has convicted us. I'm going to say it again slow because I think you missed it. These intercessors, people that pray, these midwives, let me stay right with the text. These midwives are in the middle of life and death. And the fear of the Lord is keeping them from hurting the people that are pushing hear me you can't be an intercessor and a gossiper at the same time you can't be an intercessor and a complainer at the same time i just wish that they would have let me do it this way why are we always over here this time i don't even know this you can't be so conflicted in your soul that you ratasha on monday and you are trying to kill the vision and the visionary on tuesday pick an assignment but you can't be both and I know it feels like both because your thumbs are telling on you on Facebook they are they have two options in the middle do what Pharaoh says or let the fear of God make you not hurt what's coming out of the womb don't hurt what's trying to come through the door I don't know why I want to put some pressure on an open door God is about to give some of you escorting power that when a door opens your job is the is to walk the miracle safely to the next level right here in the text I'm done watch what it says the midwives say to Pharaoh, when they find out that they're not killing them, they say to Pharaoh, the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They are vigorous. Here it comes. And they give birth before the midwife comes to them. Something about their exceeding strength, here it comes, is causing them to push faster under pressure. Lord, they, they are no longer waiting on the sideline for the aid of someone that could be conflicted about them. Man, they are no longer waiting for the surprise cash apps to come from anybody that has already had a conversation with their adversary. They say, we don't know if y'all fear God, but I saw you talking to Pharaoh. So what I'm going to do is when my water breaks, instead of trusting a double agent, I'm going to push like my life depends on it. They push. They push. 
they push. When they push, babies start coming. Watch what happens. So God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew strong. What I love about this narrative is that this is not the only fight over the womb. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 tells you that up out of the womb will come a seed to crush the serpent's head. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 tells you that a dragon stood at the womb of a woman waiting to kill the seed. Matthew tells us that King Herod was so infuriated trying to find out where Jesus is that he wanted to destroy all of the male children. What I'm telling you is, is that the Bible is consistent with the gospel narrative. If you are going to be infected, if you are going to be convinced and an employee of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel narrative has to be alive in your soul. Here's what's going to happen that you need to see in the text, and I'm done. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. What you've got to see in this narrative, what you cannot miss, is that it is possible that you can be obeying God and in trouble simultaneously. It's not the only narrative. The, o the other narrative that you gotta grab from this is that not only is that a possibility, walk with me Tev, not only is that a possibility, but the other facet is there are times where you'll have to push in the midst of pain. You can't guarantee that you know everything about the people God is sending to help you. Here it comes. Come out of paranoia. This no new friends has you so bound and so boxed in that God's got provision that doesn't look like your old circle and you keep killing it. How can God pour new wine into an old wineskin. Some of you are about to be invited into dangerous trusting where you are going to have to come into covenant agreement with what you vowed you'd never connect to again. And these women Carrying promises are ignited to push. My job in this morning session is to ignite your push. Not only to ignite your push, but I got to strangle your paranoia. Not only do I have to strangle your paranoia, but I got to give language to your pain. Because when pain is not identified, the inhabitor will assume that no one cares. And people aren't leaving Jesus because preachers are messy. Don't believe the online narrative. People are leaving Jesus because they don't understand how can bad things happen to good people. That's why. The other stuff is a cover-up because when you can't swing on God, you'll swing on his representatives. So it's low-hanging fruit to blame it on the frailties of man. When the truth of the matter is, you are trying to reconcile with how can I love you and inherit a taskmaster. Here is the beauty of the narrative. The beauty of the narrative is that this is nothing more than a foreshadow. Because you and I, were under the stringent thumb of the taskmaster of sin for years crying and believing for a deliverer and then here comes Jesus out of the womb of a teenage virgin in spite of the controversy of having to tell people that this baby was deposited by Holy Spirit 
had no aid of a man. This Jesus matures over a time span of 33 and a half years. But those 30 years at age 30 is when the game changes. And he looks at your task master of sin and confidently not only becomes the promised deliverer, but he is also the necessary midwife. He finds himself as intercessor forever at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. And when no one else could go beyond the veil, he took on flesh for himself as in the likeness of sinful mankind. And in doing so, he hung on that cross. He hung. He bled. He died. He hung he bled he died he hung he did not hang fully intact he hung with his skin hanging like ribbons for he had already visited the whipping post and the cat of nine tails laced with leather and rock and teeth and stone and glass began to make demands on his skin this was no spanking this was an evil biting grievous whip of lashings that took from him skin so much so that some scholars believe that even across the lip of his stomach his intestines were falling out you deserved the punishment the persecution of the taskmaster of sin and he that knew no sin he didn't have to participate in it uh uh he put it on as an innocent lamb I don't have time he put it on as an innocent lamb to fulfill the law because there must be sacrifice God already said it in the garden that when you sin you will surely die and there must be sacrifice given so there must be a lamb come here day of atonement what is going to happen is that there must be a swap there must be substitutionary sacrifices the innocent lamb must swap with the guilty man you missed it he is the lamb of God that was sinless and switched places for a mass deliverance the Bible says that there would come a prophet likened unto Moses that would bring his people out and the only way you're coming out is that you must come through the door come here Nicodemus don't you see the birth narrative all throughout the text Nicodemus said how can I be saved and Jesus said you must be born again do I climb back through the door back up into my mother's system no you got to be born of the water and the spirit and when you take on this new birth you have just come through the door of Jesus Christ. 2024 is going to be a year of open doors. Covenant promises that are in agreement with God's people who will come by way of the standards of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the whole point of the Exodus theme. It's a story about Jesus. Yeah. Hear me. So if you are blood-bought, your job is not to compromise in the seasons of conflicting interests. You will have to endure times that don't look like your yes, Lord. And the way that you do it is to be ignited by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody stand. I feel the smoke coming in now. He's here. Hmm. The gospel of Jesus Christ is enough. And I am talking to people who are about to become intoxicated with his story. You did not come into this room for a good time.
You did not come into this room just to meet people and to have fellowship moments. You came into this room that your soul might be ignited for the purposes of God. Hear me. Your life has purpose. Don't allow the pain to make you forfeit the purpose. I sense in my heart many of you on the edge of deciding following God isn't worth it if it comes with this much contradiction. It is not that the Bible is contradicting itself. It is that God doesn't have to share all the details of the plan with you. His ways are not your ways. So he will show you the finished product and make you faith your way through the fine print. Trusting him will never go out of style. Last thing and then I'm going to pray. The anointing of God is going to rest on you. Stop in my... I want to suggest, I want to tell you what to do. I want to suggest that you stop praying for a life that puts God out of business. If blessing equates to you, you don't have to pray or believe God anymore. Then you're not asking God for a blessing. You're asking him to quit. You've got to reform your thinking about what the blessing of the Lord is. God will allow you to endure so that you can be believable. When someone asks you, how do you live in that six-bedroom house with a GED? Do you sell drugs? And you can confidently respond to them. Some trust in horses. Come on. Some trust in chariots. But all I did was put my trust in the Lord. Here's what I want you to do. If you don't mind, if you're not too nervous, and if you are, that's okay. You don't have to do it, but grab hands with the person next to you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to be the midwife for a second. I'm going to pray for you. That your faith would fail you not. Many of you are on the verge of the greatest decision of your life. Huh. Many of you are about to come to the conclusion of the chaos. You are about to meet the finality of your fear. But before you see the end credits and figure out how the movie ends you are going to have to have the greatest faith push of your life under constraints threats turmoil misunderstandings and lies you are about to produce and the producing will not just be independent of the works of your hands it will come in your willingness to get in the spirit the next 30 seconds, I'm going to speak in a language that I know not of. What is going to happen is it'll be my heart partnering with the future over the things that God is going to do in your life. Prayer is not a waste of time. Squeeze that hand. It is about to be a faith step huh? to have the audacity to believe that this slavery is coming to an end squeeze that hand you are about to have the ha huh, the audacity that not many days from today up out of the womb of my spirit is about to come an idea that rescues my bloodline come on pray in the holy ghost my god we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor and the things that you do you do forever
and I come in agree ah, I come in agreement with your people that have been under rigorous seasons seasons of exhaustion and se ah, seasons of fear seasons of turmoil seasons of chaos and identity theft and I declare over this august body of believers that you will not abort your season of productivity squeeze that hand I'm praying now for the producer sitting next to me and I prophesy you will not die until you deliver I come in agreement with the yeah the greatest push of your life and we declare that the hand of God rests upon you we come down and we come against and we stand in opposition to every hex every lie every trick and scheme that is playing on your confidence 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 cast not away your fearless confidence for in it is great recompense of reward right now we stand in opposition to the warfare that has you shaking and trembling wondering how your season will turn out i speak confidence i got the right to speak it you said that in my words is life or death and i can declare what you say according to your word and you would come and breathe where two or three are gathered you'll come in the midst confidence lift those hands and worship him come on turn them loose come on this session is for the worshiper it's for the worshiper you're watching online lift your hands come on hurry up you're watching in dallas you're watching in detroit worship him don't you quit under the rigorous tumultuous pain of the taskmaster I'm a producer I'm a producer I'm in pain but I'm producing I'm in persecution but I'm producing I've been lied on but I'm producing I'm producing I'm producing yes come on that's it the word of god is under your feet it's a line unto my path jesus the chief cornerstone is upholding my future i'm a producer i'm a producer i'm a producer do me a favor hurry up obey get out of your aisle and go touch three people and say produce anyhow hurry up come on not on your road get out of your road come on faith has movement i'm a producer come hell or high water produce my mama don't believe in me produce my daddy didn't come home produce produce Sa. produce write the book finish the curriculum and produce I don't have to have it all the right way. I'm a producer. Hurry up real quick. I got to go. But you say, Pastor Brandon, it's felt like hell on earth. And I haven't been producing. If that's you, get down to this aisle. Get down to this aisle. Hurry up. Meet me at the altar. You can't play cute. Tell your neighbor to move. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. I paid a price for this. Yes, yes, yes. When pain tried to strangle me, I looked hell in the face and said I'm a producer. Come on, lift your hands. Impartation is coming. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and worship Him. Come on, produce anyhow. Produce. Produce. Produce anyhow. Do it anyhow. In the name of Jesus. Produce anyhow. 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 Stop. Anyhow. Let the spirit of impartation, let it come upon your people that they might produce anyhow 
in the name of Jesus acceleration hey multiplication hey produce anyhow produce anyhow send confirmation send the emails produce anyhow acceleration promotion you survived the worst opportunities when you felt like quitting produce produce you survived the violence you overcame the statistics produce 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 anyhow do it anyhow I'm a producer I'm a producer I don't have all the help I'm a producer don't you quit now girl you cry too many tears to quit produce yes 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 produce anyhow I know you cried all night I know you wept all night but produce that's why you came to Chicago that's why you came to ignite to ignite your confidence and produce produce yeah produce multiply replenish the earth produce multiply come on this lady and replenish replenish yes yes all word curses in the name of Jesus loose loose hey loose loose come on you're sitting in your seat lift your hands all word curses every negative word that you said about yourself loose 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 yes you're watching online God's about to loose you from the bad narrative your reputation was sullied it was soiled loose by the word of God by the gospel of Jesus Christ he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he came with the anointing to preach captivity to captives to proclaim the acceptable year loose loose open open doors open doors open doors come on pray in the Holy Ghost if you're in your seat come on don't disengage open doors before the weekend is over open doors open doors open doors and we give you praise for it and we come in agreement with it not by power not by might but by your spirit and open door it's the time to open and we give you praise that every demonic latch every soul tie every confusion open doors yes 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 let there be blood in the heavens let there be smoke in the earth let there be war on behalf of your open doors open doors in the name of jesus new pace new ex new acceleration open doors open doors open doors open doors pick up the pace yeah yeah purchasing power yeah yeah open doors business ideas concepts entrepreneur open the door yes 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 ha! yeah yes open the door that no man can shut open the door that no man can open shut the door. yes 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 open the door oh. hey. open the door Yes. 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 Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. We want 
Listen. A door is opening. Oh, that's it. Come on. Some of you have grown tired of the shackles. A door is opening. Come on. Come on. A door is opening. I'm about to push out a promise that can save a bloodline. You didn't come up with that idea. God put it in your belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the door opened, you push out a promise. But all of us are not the ones pushing. Some of us are the midwives risking our lives to make sure somebody else's dream doesn't die. Watch what God does in the last part of the text and I'm done. God looked upon the midwife who was risking her life so someone else's dream didn't die. And the Bible said that God blessed them and gave them family. You didn't shout over family because you and your brother haven't spoken in six months. So I didn't come here to promise you a vacation. I came to tell the midwives that risk their lives for everybody else. God is about to give you family reconciliation. The fussing is coming down. The misunderstandings are about to be straightened out. The divorce papers are going to be torn up. Family reconciliation. Woo! Look one person in the face. Hurry up. Say, neighbor, you don't know how bad I need God to minister to my family. Come on, tell them, say, I don't have the strength just yet. But will you go up and praise that we are about to be reconciled? Hurry up, see if you got a neighbor that'll give God praise. That God's about to bless my family. Come on, don't be selfish. I said God's about to bless my family. Somebody's coming off drugs. Somebody's coming out of perversion. Hey, hey, hold on, clap. Somebody's coming out of pain. God's about to bless my family. Hurry up, I need a midwife. That's an intercessory praiser. God's about to let an uncle put the Jack Daniels down. I feel a run in my belly. God's about to touch my family. God's about to touch my family. My nieces, my nephews, my aunties. They coming out. Come on, that's what the anointing does. When you hear a word you believe, you jump in the river. I'm not making an empty promise. The word of God said he sent his word. And his word healed them all. Give him praise. My family's coming out. Hey, hey, hey. Shabbatama. Hey, there he is. Shetanamanda, Shepakananamasio, arrows of deliverance. Get on the corners, get on the block, and go get my family. Shata, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Go get my family. If your family's got a disease and the doctor said they gotta die and cannot live, tell the blood that's too old. I said the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. What can I wash? I gotta go. Oh, wait, my sin. You looking at me strange, but you once scream away from a new season. Yes! I feel his glory. I feel his glory. I feel his glory. I cried all night. Woo! Pain all night. But here come the glory. Here come the glory. You watching online, it's moving. It's moving. Welcome to Ignite. God's about to go get my family. Yes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on, a few more seconds. Go a little harder. Yes. Someone say yes. I wish you believed God. Somebody's son is coming out of that witchcraft. Slip some stuff in his food. You coming out, coming out, coming out. Relationships are about to break up. Watch when I tell you. Somebody's coming back home. Yeah. Woo! You got a little brother or a sister bound by the nightmares of molestation. Get ready. It's going in the forgetful parts of God. Oh yes. Woo! Hurry up, take a deep breath and praise him. You can't think of nobody that you want God to go and get. Get to Texas. Get to Tennessee, get to Utah, get to California. Let the anointing that breaks yokes, breaks yokes, breaks yokes, breaks yokes. Let it break, 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 break. I helped everybody else live. God, go get my family. Grab a praiser by the hand and say, help me dance this out. I got to put celebration on this. Hurry up. Hurry up. We got to go. Be intentional. You watching online, get off the couch and give it praise. Come on, we dancing for families. You get your check later. Yeah. We're dancing for families. Every alcoholic in your family. Out. Loose him and let him go. Come on, that's it, Ignite. Hurry up. Yeah, that's it right there. Lady, kick your shoes off and let the blood get on your children. No premarital sex, no STD, no unmarked van, not in my house. Yet to my son now. Not in my house. It's the miracle of the midwife. I'm a producer. My, my, my. Come 
down your road. You're in the spirit. Dance in the spirit. I'm coming out. Like it or not, we coming out. Last thing, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, say, neighbor. Take a deep breath. Say, how would you act if I told you that every disease that runs in your family will not come nigh thee? If you got a lie of a disease in your body, by faith, give him praise. This hypertension stops here. I'm going to be healed. Laugh if you want to. Just laugh at my doctor's report that a dance brought to me. Laugh now. But don't forget to laugh when I come off insulin. He's a healer. And my whole family will be healed. Sickness and disease, bow your knee. Shabana Messiah. Lord have mercy. Somebody getting healed right now. Somebody getting healed. My God. I wish you'd praise him because he just showed up. I wish you'd praise him because he just showed up. He showed up. He showed up. He showed up. He showed up. That's my jam. I got the scars to prove it. He will, in the middle of the pain, with tears in my eyes, I know he will. I don't want to cry, but when I buried a baby, I danced all the way home. He promised me, yes he will, right on time, yeah he did. He will. My baby mama almost lost her mind. But some kind of way, God will. My children were in grief. God did. God can. God will. God did. God can. God will. God did. God can. God will, God did it, God did it, God did it, God did it, God did it. We gotta go tell. Hold on just a little while longer. The same God that brought you in, he will bring you out. The same God that allowed the taskmasters 
I'm sorry, I gotta go. He will bring you out. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came to bring us out. All right. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Listen, grab your neighbor by the hand. Hurry up, grab him by the hand. Pull him, pull him down. Say, sit down. Tell him, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Y'all gonna get me in trouble. Listen, we'll get back there. When you hear a word from God, when a word from God is given, reason is never required. Faith and faith alone must answer that door. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to dance again in a second. I want at least a hundred of you join me with $50 really quick. It's manageable. Just no extra chicken on Chipotle. You'll be good. Tell yourself no. Amen. Right now, hurry up and get that. If you're going to do that, hurry up. Meet me at the front. Come. 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 It's manageable. We should all do that. I know it's a sacrifice. But what God's about to do for you, a seed is about to kick the door down. Now is not the time to miss out on opportunities like this. The giving prompts are behind us. Get your offering. Come on, flood this altar. Flood this altar. Flood this altar. Some of us need to sow a thank you offering because it is well. Some of us are chanting, it will be well. But the truth of the matter is, some of us believe right now, it is well. If you don't have 50, get 25. If you're going to get 25, stand. If you don't have that, get as close to it as you can. Lean over, ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have an offering? If they blink three times, that's their way of saying no. Tell them, I got you. Come on, hurry up. Say, I got you. I got it. I'm going to be the midwife. I'm going to give you $2. And this $2 is going to change two years of your life. Hurry up. Come on, get it. You're watching online. Get your offering. Hurry up. I see you in the comments. I'm coming to talk to you. Hurry up. Get your offering. You're watching online. Get your 50 together. Christy, I see you. L. Parker, I see you. Jackie, I see you. Regina, I see you. The giving prompts are on the screen. You're online. You are blessed. There's at least 400 of you right now. Get a $50 offering. Hurry up. I'm away. Listen, the anointing is not regulated to the building. You are just as much a part of Ignite as if you were in here. So don't sit idly by and not cut away from your substance. Listen to me. God doesn't need your money. You can't buy a miracle. You giving your money 
is the equivalent of the exchange of your life. You go to work, you give them eight hours of your life you can't get back. In change, they give you a check. That money is not your worth. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't what you're worth. No, you got to scream it at them because they're looking a little uh, unnecessary humble. Say, you're worth way more than $11 an hour. Woo, I don't want to lose nothing, but just prophesy to yourself and say, God's about to pay me what I'm worth. Come on, only say it if you believe it. Say, I'm about to, man, clack. God's about to pay me what I'm worth. All right, get your offering. You're watching online. I'm talking to you. Hurry up. If you're giving, hold up an emoji hand. Okay, I see hands coming up all online. If you're giving, hold up your natural hand. Amen. Don't hold up your emoji hand. You in the building. You got a real hand. Amen. Watching online, hold up your emoji hand. Okay, I see you. I see you. I see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Elanda, I'm showing for you. You said you need an offering. I got you covered. I'm sewing on your behalf. Thank you so much. I see you lifting your hand. Gloria, get an offering in your hand. All right. Lift that up. I'm going to pray for you. I pray this prayer in Memphis. And God has accelerated us with productivity and promotion. The prayer is not superstitious. It's not. I just laid my life down. And it seems like if I ask God for something according to his word, he does it. So I'm going to ask God that the same grace that is on me there, let it come on me here for what we're getting ready to declare. Hold that offering up. Hold those phones up. You're watching online. I see your emoji hands everywhere. I see you. Father, I'm asking like I ask you all the time. I'm praying, God, that job applications would come to the top. I'm asking God that supervisors would not get a good night's rest until they find a way to promote us. I'm praying God that the top three people that owe us the most money, that before the month is over, that they would pay us back in full and interest. I'm praying God that you would put Sally Mae under the feet of the dancers, that those that are crippled by student loan would find the exit route. I'm praying that for parents that have kids in college, supernatural scholarships, checks in the mail, rebates, and insurance claims come for your people. And we believe that not just with a hand clap, but with a shout of joy. Give your God praise that your life is about to change. If you're giving, come and give as unto the Lord. You can find, if you got cash, put it in the basket. You got your phones. Say amen to the phone. You're watching online, our online audience. Thank you so much. What God is going to do in your city and in your life, you're going to have to call Bishop Jacobs and let him know that what happened at Ignite changed my life forever. Until next time, I'm a producer. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands. Bishop is coming. Wow. Wow. Whatever my thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well in my soul. Say it again, whatever. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Can everybody say it? Whatever my lot, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Everybody say, whatever my lot.
Somebody lift your hands if you believe it. I dare you lift your hands and receive this. Can you come stand over here by Lady V? Me? Huh? As you were singing, the Lord made a promise concerning you. That he, he had been preserving you. It had almost been like you, you had, might have felt like you had missed some great opportunities. And you have been wondering, Lord, when will my season to display what you have given me come to my life? The Lord said, like a precious gem, I had allowed you to go through the fires of persecution. When I was ministering about families, the Lord went to your bloodline and started to mend tears in the family. For it had been like, Lord, I serve you and I want them to serve you as well. The Lord said, get ready. There is coming such a season of confidence on you that your voice and your humility is about to open up doors. It's about to be opportunities for you to travel to the places that as a kid you saw and hoped would come to pass. The Lord said, you have not missed your season of exaltation for I had pulled you back to be like a mentor to the next generation of worshiper. For it had been like at the Tower of Babel. Confusion had come upon the worship of God's house. And so it shall be that a prophet is about to come and re-raise the standard and as Lady V lays her hand on you there is a tenacity for business I heard the Lord script says never broke again and I don't know what you need but by heaven's declaration you watch before the year ends you will have to admit that God did it again I need some worshipers that love this girl I said I need some worshipers that love this girl New Zion, get ready. Every time y'all see her, you're going to say, God did it again. God did it again. How were you able to move out on your own? God did it again. Hallelujah. So you at home, prophet, whatever God give you. I'm about to be prophet Nichols. God's mouth is too big to give that word to just one person. Jump about your seat and go find five people and tell them, God did it again. Hey, hey. I said, go back five and tell him, God did it again. Oh, yes. He did it again. He did it again. Oh, come on. I need a crazy church. Welcome to Ignite. The flame has hit the building. Go find as many as you can and tell him, God did it again. 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 He did it again. He healed me again. 
He blessed me again. He brought me out again. He used me again. God did it 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 again. God. I need about 300 people to go to live and you know he did it again. He did it again. He did it again. Rosh Hashanah. We are in the season of it right now. It started yesterday. We are in the season. And this is the decade of the open mouth. But the prophecy for 2084, for 2024, which is 5784, is that your open mouth would open doors. Shabbat I just need you to grab somebody's hand next to you and say, neighbor, I promise you, I'm going to keep my mouth open this whole weekend. Cause doors are getting ready to open for the rest of this year. Now squeeze that hand and shout! I'm sorry, I, I feel a whirlwind in here. I feel a crazy price. I don't want y'all to be cute. Somebody just take a moment and go. Go crap! Open doors! Open doors! Open doors! Open doors! Open doors!
contain myself. So, and you know, we do it out of the unction of the Holy Ghost. And then sometimes we sow just because there's something God's trying to meet, something God's trying to cover. But I got to obey the Lord. And I don't know who you are, but there's about 10 of you. And I don't know who you are. Some of you were sought from your ministry. Some of you were sought from your business. And some of you were sought from wherever God takes you to sow out of obedience. But you're literally getting ready to jump into a season a favor and shift for this season of open door. I sensed it yesterday when I got up and I said, Lord, I've been fighting God and not really obeying. I don't know if you want to call it that. But there's about 10 of you who are going to trust God with a $500 seed. I don't know who you are. Where's Haley? Tell Haley, run to me. I know she's probably working. Come in, Erica. Come in. I want them to see you. You don't even have to do it right now because this is not a seed to be seen. This is not a seed so somebody can think you, you know, sometimes people give so people can think they got a lot of money. This ain't about that. This is about what God is getting ready to do in your next. There go Haley. I want y'all to see either Sister Haley or Sister Erica, but the 10 of you that's going to sow it, I need to shake your hand. Where's Pastor Clack? So you don't even have to do it now, but if you want me and Pastor Clack, to, then it's not about our hands. I'm just agreeing with what God's getting ready to release into your next. I need you to either move now or see us before this service is over. There's about 10 of you. I don't know where you are. I'm just obeying the Holy Ghost. There's one. Hallelujah. There's two. I'm waiting on the others. Amen. Come, glory to God. Is that you, Elder Still? Well, run up here, Elder. Run up here. I just want to shake your hand. You can bring it whenever you got to bring it, but I need to, I need to just agree with you. I just got to obey God. This ain't to meet no budget. This ain't to do nothing. I'm just obeying the Holy Ghost. I'm just doing what the Lord told me to do. And I almost wasn't going to ask because I'm saying, God, I don't want to do it. Pastor Dixon, 
Is that you? Where we at? One, two, three, four, five, or just four? Four, five? Amen. Glory to God. I'm waiting on five. Where's the other? I'm waiting on five more. I don't know where you run up here. Even if you're not, I want you to bring it by the end of service or by the end of tonight. But wherever you are, thank you. S sir, you my brother for real. You in the Holy Ghost. I swear I was going to pour that whole bottle of oil on your hand. Glory to God. Where's the, where we at? Somebody count for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm waiting on three more. Where's the other three? Where's the other three? I said, come here, come here, come here. Come on, come on, man of God. He's working, come on. Seven, here comes eight. Where's nine and 10? They're moving quickly, clap your hands. Is that nine? Is that, ten? listen, God don't lie. Come up here, man of God, God don't lie. Ooh, there's another, that's 11. Uh-oh, we're in overflow now. That's 11, hallelujah. 12 is the number of governmental rule and order. Where's 12? That's 12. Come on here. Somebody know that. Listen, this is such a season. Hatabo Hosha. But God's getting ready to supernaturally shift some things. From the beginning of this conference, every prophet that I've talked to leading up to this conference said, Bishop, every single person that's so in that conference is going to experience a turn and a shift financially like they have never experienced before in their life. But these 10, do me a favor, jump up here because it's getting ready to hit you like a whirlwind. Jump up here, run up here, run up here. Get in line over there. Y'all line them up. I need some catchers. I need some catchers. I need some catchers. Throw that oil on me. Wear that oil. Come on, wear my adjutant suit. Jump up here, man of God. I need you to work. Y'all line up right here. Line up right here. Come on. Taba. Get in the line. Show ba 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 kata. Woo! It's already released. It's already released. It's already released. Come here. Ho! Hata! Imamo!
I had to obey God. I just had to obey him. I had to obey him. Look at somebody say your release is not coming. Your release is here. If you believe it, open your mouth and give him a shout. y'all help me listen support our vendors a lot of you all have been asking about the ignite shirts the ignite shirts will be at Baji ministries table and you could get all ignite shirts right there for the low cost of twenty dollars amen you can get your ignite t-shirts uh we're also selling the tell them yes single in the hard copy version Come on, somebody with number two on Billboard charts. Oh, come on, on the gospel Billboard chart. We, across the world, we're right under CC Winans. You better give him some praise. Sunday we'll be singing it and all that good stuff. But we have hard copies. If you get the hard copy and you want me to sign it, get it. Uh, I'm going to be signing them one of these days. I don't know, whatever day they tell me, I'm going to be out there signing them. But if you get a hard copy and don't want to wait in the line for me to sign it, then just make sure you buy a marker too. So when you come hug me, I hurry and sign my little name on it. Now all the signatures may not look the same. But just know the Lord was with me. <laughs> but I love you so much. Have you been blessed? I have. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed. <laughs> I feel ignited already. We're going to class. Uh, they sent me my, come here, lady, can, can we clap our hands for my beautiful wife, our first lady? <laughs> lady V. <clears throat> Y'all help her up here real quick. Help her up here. Y'all, she been being a mommy and, and with the kids, the children are somewhere around here being kids, amen. And uh, she's, well, let me tell you, if I'm, if I'm late, y'all know I want to be at everything, but if I'm not in a service, I've been having to miss prayer because we've been taking care of business, amen? And, uh, and so I thank God for my wife, who when I can't take it no more and want to run in church, she takes care of the business, which has caused her to kind of miss a lot. But we thank God for my beautiful queen. Can we... Don't y'all want to hear her say something, something. Say something to us. There is nothing else left to say, is there? Have you all been ignited? Oh, come on. Have you enjoyed day number two of the Ignite Conference 2023? This is only the beginning. We have so much more left in store and we're so excited about it. We're looking for the Lord to take us even higher. And so we do have the classes that are coming up. Are you all ready for the workshops? Did you not enjoy them on yesterday? All right, so today we have Igniting the Preacher Again at 12 noon by Dr. John Guns. That's my dean, woo! And then after that, I believe Igniting the Worship will be here in the sanctuary, yes, at 12 noon as well by Pastor Kim Burrell. And then following those workshops at 1 o'clock or 1.30, whenever they end, Igniting the Entrepreneur by Jeremy Joyce, and then Igniting the Marriages by our very own Archbishop William Hudson III and Pastor Andrea Hudson. So we are in great expectation for what we will receive in these workshops and the further services. Amen. I love you all. That's all I have to say. Where the man with the suits? He's out there. I was supposed to let him come back up. Y'all, I messed up so bad. I got rebuked so bad. Because y'all know when the Holy Ghost come in the room, I just move out the way. So we had two presentations we were supposed to get. But, you know, where, he coming? 
Tell him he better run. He better run like he got the, like he got hinds feet. Huh? He's got suits and ties out there. And then y'all logos. Everybody asks me, what do I use to study? I literally use, come on, man of God, run on up here like you got those. Look at them. They so cool, ain't they? Got a little blonde patch in his hair. Come on, son. Listen. But uh, Logos is going to be making their, their presentation tomorrow. Is that lime green or is that Tiffany's blue? That's lime green. All right, come on. Make your presentation. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord again. All right. <laughs> uh, we are Coats Design. I am the owner of uh, Marquis Coats. Uh, I've started when I was 15 years old. I am now 22. Um, so, I've grew up wearing suits my entire life. Um, I was at the convention, uh, PAW convention, and I was walking, um, I was working with this vendor, and I was walking at 15 years old, and I was, um, Marvin Sapp had stopped me, and he left everything at home. So he needed a suit to wear that night to preach. So I took him to where I was at, and suddenly he told me, he said, I need to do this for myself. And that right when I got home, I started off with 10 ties and five pairs of socks, and ever since then, it's been history. So. Um, this is my custom suit. Got the three button. <laughs> We just literally got these uh, Fendi ties in the mail uh, this week while we was here. We made custom bracelets. Um, I don't know if you all seen uh, Bishop Drew Sheard. He wears my bracelets. Um, Michael Lampkin. Um, and <laughs> Jamal Bryant. Um, so Coast Design is in. And I hope we can get Bishop Brandon Jacobs. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to wear no lime green, but you said you started off with, you said 10 ties, and I'm going to buy 10 ties and five pair of socks just to bless you. He already got about four ties set aside for me, and we're going to bless. Can y'all, you know what? I want to push him because he started at 15. We got to start promoting our young black entrepreneurs. We running over that Louis Vuitton and Gucci. They don't even know who you are. Nah, I dig over there too, but <laughs> but if you're going to go over there, you better come over here, all right? And we're going to support you. Well, give me your title. Look at boy, you sharp. Come on, Elijah. What's the name of your business again? Colts Design. I honor you, man of God, and I'm going to push you. I'm going to come by almost everything I can. Is this for me? I get something for free. Come on. Look at that. I needed something to wear because I think I'm a little sweaty. Come on, baby. Hold that for me. God is good. Clap your hand for Coach Design. Listen, I also want to, can we throw the Compassion's uh, um, QR code on, on, the, on the screen? Because I'm looking for 50 pastors that's going to help me support a youth endeavor. I don't even need your money. I just need your, I just need your support. So a lot of times when we hear support, we think money. This is not even about your money. This is just about your presence. And they're going to they're gonna provide the money if we will provide the bodies. Isn't that huge? Pastor Gabe is helping me with this endeavor. Uh, we're trying to do something in Africa uh, coming up soon. I'm missing this trip, but I plan to make the next one where we are doing ministry. If we think ministry is only what we do in the four walls of the church, you have missed it. It is bigger than that, amen. Uh, they're going to be making a presentation later on this evening, but I want to start getting pastors. Put your phone, get that QR code. Even if you just come to hear the information, I promise you some of our churches need this support. Some of our churches need this help. You're trying to get youth involved, get youth within the ministry. You need to be a part of this. So get your QR code, amen, and meet us for this meeting. I think that you'll be richly blessed by it. Amen. Clap your hands for that again. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow at 8.30, we have our VIP breakfast at 
9.30, and then at, but at 8.30, we got a Logos presentation. Logos is going to be doing a class to teach us how to use Logos. How many of you all have the Logos Bible app? Oh, well, that's good. More of y'all need to go buy it. It's going to help your preaching. All right, go get it. And then if you don't go get it, if you come to the Ignite Conference, you get, a, you get an upgrade at a low, low cost. Amen? So you need to go back there and get your upgrade. But beyond that, uh, if you don't know how to use it, a lot of y'all have the software and don't know what you're doing. Huh? <clears throat> but if you come tomorrow at 8.30, we're going to ignite your understanding of the logo software 8 30 i'll be here amen because i need to even freshen up on, on my skills with that so meet me here meet us here at 8 30 so that logos can give us that healthy presentation on how to use it and then some of you all may say well you know bishop jacobs i don't want to buy it until i get better understanding of how to use it meet us here at 8 30 amen and that's all right because then you get to rest after that, after Pastor John Hanna, we have the 8.30 presentation with Logos, the 9.30 VIP breakfast, and then at 12, thank you so much. Yell, yell at me, at 12, what's happening at 12? 12 o'clock, we have Pastor John Hanna and Anisha Figueroa. Y'all know we're going to roll some more, amen, tomorrow. But tonight, when? After all of your classes tonight, amen, we have Bishop S.Y. Younger and Pastor Kim Burrell. Amen. I'm excited. Are you excited? Glory to God. All right. Is that all I'm supposed to say? All right. That's, she said that. Okay, stand up. Let's go. I love you so much. Uh, if you want Ignite shirts, meet me at my table. Those who want to get some Ignite shirts um, and just everything Ignite, we'll have at the Baju Ministries table. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of the pastors. Amen. That's in the room. I see so many. Glory to God. Amen. I see so many. We th I think I saw, amen, Elder Grant and Minister Kiana with the new baby. Amen. Now, don't let everybody hold your baby now. Just let them look at it. Because, you know, you can't trust everybody. Start kissing the baby. Baby, smell like spit before you get... I'm sorry. Y'all know you, oh, the little baby. Keep your lips off, man. All right. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for what you're doing in us. Cover us with your blood as we move on to our next se section. We thank you for your strength, your presence, and the glory that's upon this move. Ignite us in these next sessions that we leave even more fire than we've come with. In the mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hug somebody as you're on your way to your session. I need everybody get to your session. You will be richly blessed by it. Richly blessed by it. Amen. Get to your session.